Wrestling fans, now you too can look as cool as Monty and the Pharaoh by wearing the official Monty and the Pharaoh sunglasses at night for $8.99 each. That's only $8.99 each. Now available at MontyandthePharaoh.com. Uh, we got to meet his partner last week. Yes, we did. Incredible interview. We got to meet and his manager too in the past. Absolutely. Yeah. And now we yeah. finally get to meet this icon. Finally. ECW legend Sabu. How are you, sir? Nice. Tell you the truth, I've been better. I'm not. I'm not great. Not no. great. Well, not great. Let's get into it. Why aren't you great? Uh, my back hurts. Uh, my wife died a few weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Kind of shit like that. Our condolences. W would yeah. you um, yeah. mind talking about Melissa at all? We could talk a little bit if you want to. Well, let's just let's have at it. Could you, you know, maybe you could tell us what kind of person Melissa was? She was a great person. She's uh, she kept me in line. If it wasn't for her. I don't know where I'd be today. Uh, she saved my life a few times, and uh, I couldn't save hers. I tried. She was a great person. Still, you know, she was great. How did you How did you guys meet? I met her about uh, 15, 20 years ago in L.A. Uh, in the in passing, mm -hmm. and uh, then I met her again 2007 in w, w, WWE. And then I met her again six years ago when these guys were bullying her on the internet, uh, talking shit about her, saying that she had sex with me and all this stuff back 20 years ago, and we didn't. We got stuck in the same hotel room, but I was a perfect gentleman, and she even said I was. I let her sleep in the bed. I slept in the chair. And, they, and then the guy who put us in the room together tried to say that we had sex together to, to cause some kind of stir, stir some shit. Mm -hmm. And so they were bullying her 20 years later about this. So I got on there and said, hey, you guys, this ain't true. It's bullshit. Boom, boom, boom. Leave her alone. And they did. And then we became friends. And then we started dating. What do you think about the Internet? Because I don't really sense that you're an Internet. I'm not, personally, I'm not much of an Internet kind of guy. How do you feel about the Internet where anybody can just hop on a keyboard? Uh, I, I resisted it for so many years. Now I'm with it. Okay. Uh, about two years ago, I said some shit on, on Twitter thinking, who's going to listen to me? And they <laughs> listened to me and got me uh, uh, suspended off Twitter for a little bit. Oh, he's been suspended too. Look at that. Yeah. There we go. We were recently suspended over uh, COVID-19 comments with Mr. Really? Hyatt. Yeah, they, wow. They, they, uh... Well, I got uh, suspended over racist, homophobic comments or something like that. And who doesn't have those or our thoughts of those? Understood. Anybody who says they're not a racist or Understood. a little bit of a racist is lying. Right. Everybody's a little bit of a racist. When you go to jail, if you're not a racist, you're dead. You got to go to your own race. You mm -hmm. got to go Mexican, black, white, whatever. You know, you can't stick alone. You have to you have to choose a side and happen that side has to be a, a race. You know, now, I, I don't really think I'm a bad racist. I'm just a honest racist. You know, I don't really even consider myself a racist. It's just a realist. No, I understand what you're saying. It's funny. It sounds you, honest you're to me. You're actually throwing me off because when I was getting ready for work this morning, I I started thinking about racism and conversations that I have with people like your example. Um, and it really had to do with Hulk Hogan, right? Because we we were talking about something on last night's show and. Mm -hmm. People were bringing up comments what Hogan had said, and I was thinking myself. What he what said behind closed, you know, if just like a magician, even though you know what he's doing is a trick, he's not going to tell you that it's a trick. Right. You know, why would he tell you it's a trick? I mean, right. That's his trick. Were you, you upset know? when the curtain call happened, the infamous curtain call at the garden? Did that piss you off? Yes, of course okay. it did. Okay. You know, I don't like. You know, I don't like people knowing my tricks of course. or know that it is a trick. Absolutely. So when I wrestled. When I went to ECW and FMW, I'm, I, I, I practiced so much to make it look so real and not be real mm -hmm. and not hurt nobody. Oh, yeah. And I hurt myself way more than I ever hurt anybody. I believe I, it. I always yeah. put myself in danger before my, before my opponent. Even John Cena said, but yeah, I heard that you hurt yourself before you hurt me. I go, yeah, you're right. He goes, well, I respect that. And I said, well, thank you. Yeah. And, and when I wrestled John Cena, everybody said he was a crowbar, the shits, that he's hard to work with. He was, he was excellent. There you go. He was excellent. There you he go. actually let me lead the match. Soft hands? Yes. Nice. Well, so interesting you speak about nice. kayfabe. There's a fan out there, PJ Taints. He has a good question, but I'm going to kind of change different format. He said he saw you on Dark Side of the Ring last night. You look great. 
Your feelings on Dark Side of the Ring and as a, a legend like yourself, are you worried about going on those type of shows now considering how they're trying to kind of turn? I mean, look what happened what to Tommy. Guys... Uh, I, I am now since the stuff with Tommy and yeah. Dan Dam, they said that they should have stood up and helped the stewardess or the flight attendant. And I agree, they should have. They should have. Someone should have helped her. Uh, fuck Ric Flair. I'd never liked him anyways. He, he, he's, a, he's a cocksucker. You know? and, I, and I'll say it to his face and I'll say it to his ass. I'll say it anywhere I see him. And someone should have stopped him, you mm -hmm. know. And and if that's what he does, because I I seen him do that stuff in the hotel room. As soon as he gets to the hotel, he gets drunk and gets naked. But that's kind of okay. He didn't corner somebody who 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 was who didn't want to be cornered. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody in his room, they deserve to be cornered. But on an airplane, that was different. And nobody helped this woman. I I, I what, almost cried for her. What did, what did you feel about Tommy's comments though? That he felt it was like boys just being the boys. Right. I mean, what was well, your feeling on that? Uh, I don't know. He 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 should have did something. If he's such that good of a guy, and I know he is, he should have did something. Same with Van Dam. I'm disappointed in both of them. They should have did something. Well, to be fair, right? Flair's a legend in the industry. But you don't want to step on him because who knows what he'll do to you. you he's about running around that? an airplane naked. Right. right. Step on him. Right. What are you talking about? Do you, you think you that cover they him up? You, you put him back in the seat. You 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 chain him down so you can't do that. You're in public. Why does Ric Flair feel like he has a right to do this type of stuff all the time? I, I don't know. He gets drunk and, and believes his own hype. He believes what he's, he's he, you know he you know he's the best worker there is, but he's not the best wrestler. You know the best wrestler is Kurt Angle. You know, and, and, and but you. but players like the, the, the best worker. You got to remember, working is not fighting. Right. If I if fighting, you know, fighting. If I resist you, work isn't work isn't shit. Right. You know. Right. Now I consider myself a good worker, but a better fighter. But I haven't had to have to prove that very much mm. because people, you know, you don't have to. You know, it's a, it's a business. Sure. It, it, you know, we're not in the background. We're not in the playground. We're, we're in a ring. It's not a sport in, of tough guys, right, in, in that essence. You're not really fighting, right? So no. you, you, you're there to take care of each other and entertain the fans. Exactly. That see. And, and even though if I don't like you, I trust you to not hurt me on purpose. Uh, and I've been hurt on purpose many times. Really? Many wow. times. When I first started, it was do as little as possible for as long as possible to get paid as much as possible. True. And I changed it to, to do as much as possible in a little amount of time as possible right. for right. a little money. Right. You know, not do it for the money, to do it for the business. Wow, that's knowledge right there, man. Thank yeah. you. That is an incredible statement. And you know what? Who can argue that? You nope. have changed the business. Yep. Well, that, that one thing I will, I will brag about, that I changed the work rate. I, that, that I did. Absolutely. Huge fan. We are huge fans of Vince McMahon, C, uh, Jr. Um, thoughts on Vince McMahon Jr. and have you ever run across him in a certain way where you actually spoke to him and things like yeah, that? Yeah. Um, well, my problem with him was he wanted to have a rela personal relationship with me. Well, th th that's fine, but he's not like somebody who I'd hang out with. Like I'll talk business with him uh, during business hours. I wouldn't chit chat with him about something about anything other than business and so he took offense to that whenever i would see him i'd kind of like could go the other direction just so i wouldn't have to talk to him i didn't think you had to kiss somebody's ass to, 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 to do your job right i figured if you do your job that's kissing ass Wait, but so you felt that he was looking for you to proverb you know do the proverbial ass kissing when you yes, ran across him and then you just veered out because you didn't want any part of that situation i watched everybody they were acting big you know they're bold chested big and then when they see Vince, boom they drop right back down and start kissing his ass right away Right away, like completely changed your co character. That, made, made, disappointed me in him. That must have big annoyed, time annoyed you big and time. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. And, some, and, and I got, you know, a little advice from somebody who said, Yeah, fake it. I said, But I, I can't fake right. it. Yeah. I, I can't fake it. I could fake it once, but I can't keep this up. You know, right. he's not somebody who I'd hang out with. So, so I can't fake it. You know, shit, I, I could fake it. That kind of money, I can fake this. Yeah. Well, I can't fake nothing. That's but, just, but, I, shining oh, yeah, shoes. But, but if I have to fake it, it that's too much work. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I don't like work. I rather mm -hmm. what I consider is not work. It, 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 it's it, it comes natural to me when I have to when it comes work. I don't like it. Like what what I didn't like about WWE was it was scripted. Everything was scripted. I understand that for guys who don't have the right frame of mind to put together a good match. I understand that. But I do. I was wrestling 20 years oh, yeah. when they hired me, so I thought they were hiring Sabu for 20 years of experience, not for a body. Mm. But they were hiring me for a body. They wanted me to do what, they, what I was told and do it their way. And I don't mind doing things what I'm told, but if it's not 
things that I would do, I, I, I would speak up. I go, I, I, Sabu wouldn't do that, you know, or you know, I wouldn't do that, yeah. you know. And they go, well, we don't care what you would do. We care what you're gonna do. You know, you're gonna do it, even if you don't, you, even if you do, you never done it before. So I would tell them stuff I was gonna do during the match, then I wouldn't do it on purpose. You know, just so I don't, I didn't like telling people my tricks before I did them. Even Vince, I didn't like telling them. Right. So I, I would give them like a. a, a they 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 would want a play by play before the match, and I give them a fake play by play, and then change it in the ring. Not even change it, just do the other stuff in the ring that I thought was right. Because when I first started wrestling, a good worker was considered a good worker by how he reacted on his feet, mm. not how good he remembered something. Even we we didn't care if you could remember a spot or not, as long as you could make uh, do the right thing at the right time. That's what that's what counted, you know. Uh, Tommy Dreamer and Rob Van Dam. Yes. So I really think the fans are here because I think Sabu has got something to say beyond that. So the conversation was Pharaoh asked. They were Dreamer was young. Rob Van Dam was young. On the flight. Back Just then. giving a recap so then we could turn it over to Sabu. Sure. Um, they probably were afraid, and Sabu said, "Well, of the veterans, I, I get it. The veterans, I on get the plane. it. But if it was me, right." I would have. He would have. He would have done, done something. He would have done something. And then Pharaoh said, "Well, you're homicidal, genocidal, and uh, <laughs> and suicidal, and suicidal." Yeah. And, and he said, and he, "He said not really." Don't say that. No, <laughs> he did not say that. Now you're the, don't fib. Sabu actually said, "Yes, I it's am." It's a work. It's a yeah. work. He said, no, it's a, it's a oh, work. I can't anymore. Can so I, anyway, can you're going to continue on. on let's air. not lose. Let's not lose your well, train of thought. I, I was. I, I, I wrestled in Las Vegas for the first time about 15 years ago, and the and. The, the promoter comes to me, he goes, how many tables do you need? I go, I just need one. And the guy I'm wrestling goes, oh, I need a couple. I go, for what? He goes, I'm going to give you a power driver off the ring. I go, what the fuck? He goes, well, you're crazy. I go, that's a work. I said, I said you're crazy thinking I'm crazy. <laughs> I go, Who the hell's going to take can, that? Can I ask you this? A legend like yourself, and then you're working with some of these young guys, isn't that like against the rules of wrestling for a young guy to even approach a legend like yes. yourself and oh, say, man. I want to do this? Yes. Or, should... or tell me a spot yeah. that, uh, uh, tell me their spot they want me to do without me asking them. Right. Yes, yes. That's that's out of place. It's disrespectful. We lost New Jack. Uh, Can you talk about New Jack a little very good bit? Very friend of mine. And, and, you know, tell us uh, the type of person. Uh, he wasn't he was... as bad as people thought. Me, me and him have always been on a good, good level. Uh, even when he. One time, a funny story is he was saying, "Motherfuck everybody in this dress room. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, but not you, Sabu. Fuck you, fuck." <laughs> I, said, right, He's I got going you down back. the line. <laughs> He's like, not you. He goes, "Fuck everybody, but not you, Sabu." Oh my <laughs> that god, that is great. But, but a new Jack, his stuff was blown out of proportion. He wasn't as as as, as uh, he wasn't as blessed thirsty as people thought it was a work it was, was a work he was working the shit so out of if, us if he really wanted to stab Smart somebody man. he wouldn't stab him in the forehead he so stabbed him in the stomach let me ask and let he me ask, do it in the dressing room let me ask you yeah. this question and again answer it to the way you want to answer it tony atlas is here a good friend of the show actually has a yeah. program on our channel along with some other wrestlers yeah. he'll be interviewing uh mega powers 2.0 with the pharaoh correct as i'll be stepping away but anyway correct new jack well known for ripping atlas apart on a lot of shoot interviews do you believe that's a total work or do you think it's it, a half work Half a work. Yeah, half yeah, a yeah. work. It's half work. Like he, he sh it's called shooting from the hip. It's or, or shooting on the square. Like it's a joke, but still, it's it's kind of true. A little reality based. Yes. With over the top, but blown out of proportion. So yes. when you say Ric Flair is a piece of shit, is that over the top or is that just a straight? That's a little over the top. I, I just don't like him. Uh, he he didn't like me. He don't like me. I don't like him. And that and that's it. But know? why doesn't he like you? What did you do? I, I don't know. He just flat I, out said I, I don't like he, you. He, I, I'd come into a dressing room, shake everybody's hand. I'd go to shake his hand, he'd turn around. Oh. Or, or he'd come in and shake everybody's hand and skip me. Hmm. For some reason, I don't know why. Hmm. And so I stopped putting my hand out for him. I go, okay, I get it. He don't want to be. He don't want to be friendly to me. That's fine. But uh, but don't be rude to me either. You know. Do you think that may? And again, speculation. Think maybe he didn't like your style. And, and I don't know. He, he he's a jealous prick. And I'm not afraid to say that. I don't give a fuck if he was here or not. I'd tell him who was face. He's a jealous prick. He, and he doesn't need to be. He, he's on top. He's the best. He's the best worker there is. And, but he still wants to cut down the, the lower guys or not give them a chance. Well, you, you, the Sheik was your trainer, right? Yes. He was an old school guy. Did he explain that to you? Like, don't let anyone take your spot. Did he try no, to say he, that? No. Well, he said, don't let anybody take your spot. Don't slack on your spot. But don't, but don't step on nobody, and don't, don't, don't do anybody wrong to get ahead. Because then that, you're not really getting ahead. The, 
I want to be better than the next guy on an even even playing field. I want to be better on better than him if he's being held back. And in scripts from Vince, uh, I start. I go. If I did this, I wouldn't be proud of myself. So how about I do this? And, and I use that for the promo. Like I'm not going to use your promo. I'm not going to read your script. I'm and they didn't like it. They actually fired me from it. Wow. Mm. Wow. How did you find Stephanie McMahon to be as a person? She, she was okay to my face. Behind my back, she was a cunt. Oh. You know, behind my back, she motherfuckered the hell out of me. Really? To my face, she was the nicest girl in the world. Shane? What's Any up? thoughts on Shane McMahon? Shane? Shane's very nice, too. I, 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 never heard any, I never heard him ever say anything bad about me, but I'm sure he did. But, but, but uh, he's, a ba you know, he's a worker like his dad. He's a, he's a baby face to your face, and then he's a heel behind your back. I think. But, but Shane, to my face, utmost respect. You know, what can I say? Okay. So one thing we didn't ask you, do you respect Vince McMahon Jr.? Yes. Uh, I, I don't dislike him or hate him or nothing like that. But uh, he actually even said to me, I was better than he thought and that I was better than anybody else. Every, better than everybody else. He actually said that to my face. Mm. But then still questioned every spot I did. Like, I said, how can you say I'm better than this guy if you don't even let me show you how I can continue to be better right. or continue to be good? Right. He, he still said, you're better than the next guy, but I still want you to do this. You know. All right, so we're out of time. I'm sorry. What? So Boo! we have something called the Pharaoh's Final Question where he it killed me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I, uh, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's been an honor. Thank you for taking the time out. Thank you for asking me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Sabu. One thing I would ask you just if you could end the show with is um, if you could just share your final thoughts about Melissa on the show okay. again uh, for us about we'd like you to share your final thoughts about Melissa on the show and maybe, you know, if I, I miss her every second. I, I think about her. <clears throat> And what happened every minute, and um, I, I don't deserve to be happy because of what happened to her. Uh, I thought she could be a never. I thought she could couldn't be in anybody's better hands than mine, and she died on my watch. So I have to punish myself for that, and I, I don't know. I, I think about it all the time, and I can't help it. And and even the doctors say. Even in a hospital setting, she wouldn't have been able to be saved because her heart was so bad. Mm -hmm. But we didn't know that. And I still think I should have saved her. I, I should have saved her. I tried, but it didn't work. You know, the CPR, I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried. I tried so hard, I pissed myself when I was doing it. And it didn't work. It didn't help her. And I, I can always, I will always punish myself for that. I don't know why, but... Uh, I don't know why exactly, but I feel that I, I should have saved her. I, I could, I should have saved her. Uh, I don't care what anybody says about doctor, hospital setting, whatever. She died in my in my watch, and I will punish myself for the and the time for that. Well, Sabu, I, I hope I hope when you you know having those rough times, you at least try to remember how many people love you. What an amazing person we can now say you are because we got a chance to finally meet you. And I'm sure Melissa would want you to be very happy to the best of your abilities the rest of the way, my brother. It's, it's, it's hard for me to even smile without her. I understand. I, we got you. I understand. You know, I can't smile without her. I, I, just don't, I didn't smile much with her anyways, but I really can't without her. We just got to remember too, man, is that you, uh, lo you loved her unconditionally. She loved you unconditionally. And yeah, uh, that's very you know hard what? to come she by. Knew when we got together, she knew I was broke, and it didn't it didn't mean nothing to her. There you go. That was material to her, and I thought the same thing. You know, so I'm broke, so what? But the, uh, most people go, "Well, you're broke." You know, fuck you. But she didn't. She goes, "You're broke, so what?" You know, we'll, we'll, we'll fix it, and we we were fixing it, and it is fixed now. I just wish she was here with me. Uh, and and here she is, but I just wish she was physically here with me. Uh, well, uh, I'll never forgive myself. Well, we're going to end this show with this.